Hello and welcome to Buy Africa, the show where we focus on investment opportunities around the continent. I'm your host, Tsepo Mudiba, and thank you for joining me. Tonight, we're joined by Mr. Africa himself, Langama Dongo, Investment Principal at Africa Strategic Impact Fund. And today, we are focusing on Gabon and the structure of the economy as a whole, and then delving deeper into some of the stocks there, uh, specifically Siat Gabon and BGFI Bank. Langa, uh, thank you for joining me again. Uh, Thank you for having me. Uh, Gabon. Yes. Um, uh, your view, the structure of the economy, um, oh, is, is this another one of Africa's success stories? Um, I think Gabon is a very interesting country um, in Central West Africa, um, previously well dominated by oil, which accounted for about 81% of its GDP. Mm -hmm. um, the government is trying to work around adjusting that a little bit more with a greater focus now on agro on agriculture and agro processing and and has this been a theme that we've seen over the last couple of years it's a theme that has been persistent since uh about early 2000 mm. um the shift has been rather slow because of the infrastructure challenges but i think uh, they're suddenly starting to come to grasps with the whole concept around agriculture and its importance particularly on the african continent Right. Uh, so a, a lower oil price doesn't necessarily uh, uh, help prop up government coffers. And oil, and a lower oil price definitely. Uh, Gabon was one of the countries that really took a knock, but I think they were fairly adjusted and fairly advanced in terms of where they were starting to take the economy. So um, not as grave as it would have been had this happened a little bit earlier on in the life of Gabon. Mm. In terms of the nuts and bolts of the population, um, you know, is this a young population? Uh, is it fast growing? I think uh, they are following the general African story where they are set for a population dividend it's a young uh, economy uh, a lot of people are coming into the working class by uh, 2040 anticipate that at least uh, a third if not slightly more than that of the population will have moved to the cities um, again that presents with it its own challenges i mean they need to come up with solutions for unemployment they need to come up with uh, uh, ideas on how to develop new industries but I think uh, they're taking the right steps um, on the general. Okay if we start in, at the company level now um, uh, touching on on Siat Kaban I mean this is uh, potentially one of those where privatization has actually been uh, quite positive. Mm -hmm. um, your thoughts on the business and a, a little bit of color on what exactly they do? Okay, um, I think it's important to then go back and start the story in Belgium where we have the uh, SEAT group mm. whose main aim is to invest in agro-based agro businesses and to take a, a controlling stake. Uh, one of their interests is uh, SEAT Gabon where they have a 95% stake um, and then they are involved in three main lines, the production of uh, palm oil, yep. uh, the production of livestock, and then they're also involved in some other downstream activities. Um, they are basically trying to grow their portfolio on the African continent, and Seat Gabon is, becomes one of the strategic areas because um, there they have a base from which they're doing palm oil, which is a key ingredient in many uh, downstream products such as soap, uh, oils, and uh, for lotions and so forth and so on. Um, and I guess the structure of, of, uh, of Gabon facilitates uh, the palm oil production quite nicely. Yeah, I think it's one of the countries that um, allows for the growing of the palm trees and therefore uh, it's a good place to be in, particularly if you are in that space. And I think it also offers a great scope in terms of their um, particular main line um, uh, where they are focused on agro processing and agricultural production. Mm. Um, it's, a fail, it's a highly fertile country. Mm. And as we continue to move away from um, the oil-based economy, they are one of the countries that is po uh, one of the companies that is well poised to take advantage of the agro boom that is coming to Gabon. 
Right. Mm. Um, now you spoke a little bit about livestock, um, specifically beef, right? Yes. Um, it's not certainly one of the things that I would have thought about um, when thinking about Gabon, um, but they seem to be quite profitable there. Yes, I, I think one of the things uh, that is key to that is the positioning of Gabon in the Central and West African context. They find themselves in a position where as said, from their production, they're able to supply the whole country, but they've got immense export potential because of where they sit. Yeah. I mean, uh, you will realize that they then have a, an opportunity to then export into countries like Cameroon, but also into the most populous country in Africa, Nigeria. Yeah. And I think they've managed to leverage that and to uh, experience substantial growth in that particular aspect of the business based on their positioning. Now, from a, I guess, potential perspective, um, as you touch on, the export potential is uh, astronomical, really. Um, are they able to scale up the business? Are they able to increase production in each of the areas that they, they're focusing on? I think um, Gabon offers them the potential to upscale. But um, from my perspective, one of the things that Seat will definitely have to do is not look at Gabon as a final destination. There right. is great scope for growth, but they need to also look at it as a platform for entry into the rest of Central West Africa and into Central Africa in particular. Um, I think from there, because of the integration of the exchange and also because of a low common currency and trade agreements that exist in that particular area, mm. they can then leverage that for growth within the region. I think it will become important as they go forward for them to become a regional player. More people are paying attention to what's going on in Gabon, so the level of competition might start to increase. But the first move advantage into uh, other countries in the region like uh, Cameroon, possibly also into countries like Chad, um, dependent on how things pan out as we go forward, would definitely serve them well. Mm. Now, uh, the prospects aside, um, as, as things stand, is this a, a business that is fairly profitable? Um, we know the underlying market is, is quite volatile for palm oil. Um, mm -hmm. Is this a business that, that looks like makes, makes, it makes money? It's a business that does make money, and it's a business that will continue to make money. As a parent who is able to, from time to time, as may needs be, to inject capital to stimulate growth in any of the business units that they think makes sense. But uh, we all know the food security story in Africa. We all know the manufacturing story in Africa. And um, there are always going to be a business that makes sense uh, fundamentally in terms of their approach to market in terms of their product lines, uh, in terms of the economics of production, where Gabon is one of the countries where production is actually relatively cheap compared to the rest of the continent. Mm. And I think they're continuing to leverage that well in order to, to gain scale. Now, to wrap that all up, uh, does, you know, uh, it sounds like a good story, right? Uh, good prospects outside, um, fairly profitable right now, mm. as you touch on. Um, is this a company that you'd be potentially looking at to, to acquire or buy? I think um, if you're going to have exposure to um, Central Africa, I think this is one of the stocks that you definitely have to be looking at. Good prospects. It also gives you uh, access to the export market. So I think it's definitely something that I would uh, hold in a portfolio. Okay. Now we're going to touch on your favorite sector, which yes. is the banking sector. Ah, I thought we'd never get there. <laughs> <laughs> um, your thoughts on BGFI? Um, a good bank fundamentally sound. Um, they've understood that one of the things that's going to lead to their growth um, is understanding the region. Um, a bank is one of the largest banks in, in Gabon. I think it's either first or second now. Um, also another one that uh, is doing well in terms of the fundamentals of what the African market needs. They've uh, their product uh, development speaks very well to corporate, it speaks very well to retail banking. Mm. They're also now trying and are a leader in terms of bringing other products that we've generally not seen up, taken up in Africa, such as your mortgages. They are very mm. strong in that particular part of the market in Gabon and in the other eight countries where they have a presence. So does that mean that the structure of banking in Gabon is a little bit more sophisticated than elsewhere in the continent? I would not use the term sophisticated. I would say they have managed to 
um, in more ways than one, come to a point where they have simplified the way in which they do banking, but also created a product mix that makes sense on that simple platform. Mm. Um, I think one of the things, like I said, that they've done is to make um, the process of getting uh, mortgages and home loans as simple as possible compared to the rest of the continent. And I think it's actually a model that um, people can take a look at and see how they can apply in the different countries where credit is not really a boom town, if I can put it that way. Okay. And from a banking penetration perspective, is there scope um, for uh, quite a bit of, uh, I guess, positivity from a revenue perspective? I think in terms of um, one, looking at first their product mix, then secondly, looking at the countries to which they have an exposure. Um, I don't think uh, it's a bank that necessarily wants to be number one or two in any particular country, but they are happy to be distributing certain products to the lower end of the market in certain countries. And in particular countries yep. like Gabon, they are happy to be doing uh, specialist services like asset management because they are without competition and therefore they become the number one in that particular market. I think they'll continue to uh, get uh, revenue growth um, as long as they continue to access the neglected parts of the market, if I can call it that way. Mm. Uh, because in some countries as well, they're introducing the insurance products yep. and then they are now trying to see how they can insure agriculture as well. So really explore, exploring the, the breadth of potential products uh, for the region as a whole. Now, does that translate, I, I love asking this question, does that translate into, into good returns? Um, you know, is this a very profitable bank? Uh, I think comparative to what it costs them to be doing business in the in the region, their returns are fairly competitive. Mm. Um, I would say... So not shooting the lights out? I would, would not say shooting the lights out. I think there's a lot of things that they could be doing differently. Uh, but as the rest of the world and the rest of the continent becomes a, awake to the opportunity that is in Central Africa in particular, mm. they are definitely going to be a partner of choice in terms of entry because they know the lay of the land they've been uh, through in Gabon for a while. And in terms of their growth into the rest of Central Africa, they're not necessarily number one, but they are guys you can run with. Uh, so to wrap up, is this one that you're bullish on? Again, as uh, giving me exposure to a particular region, it's, a, it's an asset that I would definitely look into. So qualified, yes? It's a qualified, yes. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Let's leave it there. Thanks to my guest, Langama Dongo. Uh, send us your thoughts about the show using the hashtag BuyAfrica. For myself and the team, goodbye.